Hey, I'm Chris, and I've been using Linux full time for five years now. I actually first touched Linux about 10 years ago, and this is why I wanted to do this video because it's sort of like a 10 year anniversary and go over what I think of Linux and what it's currently like and why I actually switched to using it full time about five years ago. It's also becoming a more and more popular platform with Linux now taking up 4.55% of the share and more if you include Chrome OS, which is a Linux based operating system. And the fact that in Steam Hardway we did hit 2% on Linux users, it's gone down a bit, but it's more than OS X now as well. But also that I think people are just more interested in switching over as Windows 11, they're including ads. You have things like Copilot, a lot of features that people don't want. And also on the Apple end, it's not too great with a price of the new MacBook Air being over £1,000 and only having a measly 8GB of RAM and 256 SSD storage space being not exactly a desirable purchase. My first Linux operation I touched was Ubuntu, specifically 14.04, which you see was released back in April, 10 years ago now, so it's been 10 years since then. And it was just the go-to operating system at the time. Ubuntu was the most popular and arguably was the most intuitive at the time. The others really that were dominant were Red Hat, Debian and Linux Mint are the ones that I can think off the top of my head that were ones that you would also like to download. I had actually heard of Linux before I even tried and installed it. I actually heard it in school by the IT teacher who had mentioned that Windows and Mac weren't just the only options, there was Linux. I do remember at the time looking it up, watching a few videos and it looked very basic even back then. It was just kind of a thing you did with Linux. You can really do any, there was like no Windows application that could run it. Uh, I wasn't sure if Wine was very popular back then either, but I first installed it during work experience. It was in the IT department and they wanted me to install Linux on a computer, which I did, and it was Ubuntu. And once I had my week there, I decided that I had a, you know, I had an old spared laptop and I installed it on there to try it out because it was cool and I'd used it back then. And I kind of just played around with a bit. I installed stuff, stuff like OpenOffice. I had Steam to try out because it was available then. It was a quite a new thing. You could only install Steam native applications, which are very, very few of them. Usually just a few indie games and just the Valve games which at the time I actually don't think they, they didn't run as good as Windows like they sort of do now. And I never it never came my full thing because it had, is, it had issues. Like with GNOME, which is the way it kind of looks, it did not like 4K when I tried to plug it into the 4K monitor. It just kind of broke on itself. This might have been driver issues, which is a whole story itself with NVIDIA drivers and AMD drivers. They were not as good or anywhere as good as they are now. For basically a few years, it just kind of sat down on the laptop. I used it to write a few reports for school, but it never became my main operating system. It was just kind of there. The laptop was slower than my desktop. It was an older laptop, so there was also just no reason to use it as well in that case. And then uh, my hard drive died, which contained Windows. And so I was actually forced to use Linux. I used Ubuntu at the time to cover up. And that is when Proton had just dropped, which is Steam's emulation system. And I believe I was on Ubuntu 18, whatever the latest release was, and I tried this out. And at this point, Ubuntu 18 was in a significantly better state than when we looked at it in 14.04. That's because things like export controllers, they could, you plug them in and they worked fine. You then have now had Steam Proton where you could start looking into playing these Windows games on Linux at, well, hopefully natively. At the time, the performance was not great, and it was like limited to 10 games. You could try it on any game you wanted, but the results were not great. They either didn't work or the performance was horrible. And even in the improved games, like Tekken 7 was one of them. I actually did try it, and I played it with a friend. And there was like some graphical issues, but it actually worked fine. The frame rate was fine for playing. It was nowhere near as good as it would be on Windows, but, it, but I still played it, and it was still a fun experience. And I kept Ubuntu dual boot installed on there as a backup. So once I had a new drive for my Windows operating system, I still had Ubuntu installed, they would now dual boot it. And Ubuntu was becoming like a more useful thing, so like for work and programming. And Windows was becoming more of like a, you play video games on it. But because Ubuntu and Linux was just becoming so much more functional and better, like they previously like stuff worked on 14, yeah, but it wasn't great, like it was pretty much always better on Windows or I guess even though we're OS X. But now with drivers becoming significantly easier to install, there was less issues, uh, stuff just worked out of the box. So you could plug a con Xbox controller in and it would work fine. You now had Proton on, uh, coming along. Uh, and when it came to programming, it was has, I guess it always been better really. It, using the terminal to then just 
execute something was far better and it became incredibly more prominent when we did OpenCL, which is like a parallel programming kind of API. It had problems on Windows. Windows was not great with it. It did not work too well with it, but on something like Linux, it was just super easy. You just did an install. And there was a research assistant at the time who helped us at the workshop, said, just use Arch Linux. It, look, I just do a pseudo Pac-Man install. Here it is, and I just create a make file and I run it. And since then, I haven't really looked back since. Arch Linux has been my primary operating system, and I rarely go on Windows. I haven't been on Windows in over a year now, and it gets less and less so because more and more applications just run on Linux, or there's an alternative version that is just as good as a Windows version. And so I'm at the point where I just don't really need Windows, and I'm thinking of just getting rid of it on my system. Do I really care about not being able to play the latest Call of Duty? No, not really. There's just other games I can play. So that's really just a stopgap. It's just a couple of live service games that I can just avoid. There's not a big deal. I don't, I'm not into that fear of missing out anymore. I can just do something else, do some programming, or just play a different game and save myself the money as well. And so my end date, I think I'm just getting rid of it is next year, 2025, because I believe that's when Windows 10 ends support. So they're gonna end support. Maybe I may as well just uninstall it. I, you know, and use that drive space for something else. And so, what's it been like over the five years? Well, it's been really good. There has been a few issues here and there. But I think I'll go over some of the issues I've had. Firstly, finicky. There can be issues where it's, stuff just doesn't work, and it can be quite complicated. And it might have to result you going to the terminal and fixing some things out, which can be annoying, and editing files. One of those is with the drivers. Definitely graphics drivers has been an issue. Uh, they are possibly resolved now. And this is just, this has pretty much been exclusive with NVIDIA actually. NVIDIA have been very touch and go with their drivers, which is quite funny because NVIDIA are obviously very big on Linux because of AI, but their graphics drivers has been propriety and they just don't work really that great. But now they've actually defaulted to the open source so they, they started an open source driver that you can install it was a bit slower than the proprietary but now they are defaulting to the open source one so whenever you install a driver on Linux it will default to that open source one so you can see that just in July that NVIDIA says that the next Linux driver is just going to be open and that they enabled on by default which is the Wayland which is like the communications between the display server yeah I've had issues with when it comes to graphics driving and just displaying stuff and recording stuff has been issues but it seems that NVIDIA are far more open and supporting these packages now uh, resulting in much better experience uh, rather than I believe the it was the alternative was X7 which had issues unlike stuff like Wayland. While these issues can be annoying it's not exactly game breaking and it's not going to make me want to switch back to Windows. They are functional at the end of the day it's just that they could have been better and it's not like something I would say exclusive to Linux there has there's issues with Windows as well like as of recently there was this issue which was the NVIDIA drivers all would conform to blue screens of death on Windows PC because the CPU to have been different in structure set so you do get those instances of stuff just not working we also just had the CrowdStrike issue which caused huge outages across the whole globe um, and that was only on Windows but that's like such an instance could have happened on Linux because it was a bug in the CrowdStrike code. So it wasn't the fault of Windows or Microsoft in any way. And just those events just can just happen. In terms of software, it's been fine, if not better. Uh, there's always like an alternative out there nowadays. And we've seen a big rise in cross platform or web app applications. A good example is like Discord here. Discord is written in TypeScript and then is compiled with Electron. That is a cross platform application. TypeScript is a variant of JavaScript which runs in your web browser, and every operating system has a web browser. Therefore, this application can simply be made to run on every browser, every operating system, sorry. The greatest thing is in the open source software. It seems that they have improved greatly. Uh, this might be because they're getting way more contributors. I'm not actually too sure, but stuff like Inkscape. A few years ago, they were sort of functional. They worked and they were an alternative. It's like, hey, this is, I guess, works. But now it's like, hey, this works really well. Yeah, it doesn't have all the humongous, amazing features that you get. And stuff like Photoshop, like some of the AI features, whether you like them or not, you know, they are cutting edge features, but it's like significantly improved. It's in performance. 
I remember Inkscape used to be like incredibly slow. I think it is still CPU bound, but it can take a while. If you have a slow CPU, it's not very fast, but it's greatly improved. But I also think there's like a request and even some testing for hardware acceleration. So it runs superior. Now, if you're someone's more graphic design, yes, Inkscape is functional and is good. It's not going to be at a professional level. And I think, you know, at the workplace, they're going to be wanting either something like Photoshop or Affinity. Unfortunately, those two still don't run on Linux. I can't see them running Linux anytime soon. Uh, people have asked for a Linux version of Affinity. Uh, they said no, unfortunately. And that's probably because it's significantly hard. They are far more ingrained with the GPU and use like the DirectX stuff that just knows doesn't run on Linux. And to make a Linux version would require a tremendous amount of effort. Uh, for a very small return, the uh, player base or user base, I should say, is, is just not going to be big. But then again, it's, it's just not big because people aren't using it. If there's more people on it saying, yeah, I, I can't use your product because you don't support it, then they are maybe feel more inclined to actually start looking into developing on it. The same can be said for video editing, but I think maybe it's better. I'm not an expert in those areas, but Caden Live, I believe, has a Linux version. But in terms of open source software a shortcut is amazing in fact for what it is and that has hardware acceleration uh, for both nvidia graphics card you can use the nbank and you can also use amd's version which is super, super it's amazing really actually and it's pretty feature rich yeah it's not gonna be amazing like those paid for software but you can still do so much and i've i think quite you know a few youtube and content creators big ones actually just use shortcut because it's free open source, it does everything they need. Why pay money or subscription on those services? Logos by Nick is a channel that uses Inkscape and does Inkscape tutorials and just shows you how good this piece of free software really is. He also does comparisons, so you can see it, Inkscape versus Illustrator and it's getting to the point or is at the point where you are using the software and you're like, well, it has all the features I need to use. Yeah, Illustrator has some better bells and whistles uh, and it maybe is a bit more faster or fluent, but why would I pay that subscription fee or that initial cost when I don't, it's like not really a justified purchase. Like, oh, this can do everything I want. I, I gain very little for purchasing this. And so that's the experience I have when using Linux. It has everything I need and I want, and I don't have to deal with the issues that are present on Windows. I don't have to pay for the Windows. I don't have to deal with the ads. I don't have to deal with the software that's forced to use on it and the lack of support when it comes to the latest version i can just use linux and yeah i don't get to use certain pieces of software but it's really not the end of the world there's either an alternative or it's just something minor that i don't need uh, when it comes to usability uh it's, it's hard for me to gauge because i'm a software developer and i'm very proficient in coding and tinkering and using the command line so i, I can't give a a good judgment of what it would be like for someone who's just not in that field like an artist or something they probably hit a brick wall something that i might find super simple they're gonna be like i have no clue so i, I can't really say on that if someone is tech illiterate they're probably gonna find it difficult but they're, you know, they're gonna find windows or even mac difficult it's just whatever system they're very used to if they're used to windows you're gonna to struggle to, to start using links it is gonna be different it's not exactly the same uh, however it has greatly improved there is a software store the way you can just download stuff you're not forced to use the terminal and you only really use it for going through directories uh, maybe unzipping stuff it's really up to you it's just not a requirement i mean i like to use it that's plus plus my personal preference you're not forced to use it uh if, if you use the steam deck which is a linux based operating system have any of you some of you out there have never touched the term command line because it just has everything there for you uh that alone's desktop mode. How many people have actually switched to the desktop mode or just used when it comes with that native app that when it loads up? Where Linux has been really good has been in the programming department. That's like its natural area, especially in servers. It just like works really well. You just install it, like you can do a pseudo Pac-Man, then whatever pack application programming language name, and then you're ready, you're good to go, and you can just remove it at any time. You don't need to be searching, get an installer and blah, 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 and it will all automatically update for you. Or with Python, you have your environment variables where you can just set up, oh, I want to use Python 3.8. Let me just create a little pip file, uh, do a pip end in the terminal. That's where it just shines so well. 
So if you're a software developer and you're not making Windows exclusive software or Mac OS X software, I just highly recommend, you know, you should be on Linux. I think Linux is the best platform to do it on when it comes to programming. It's been the most painless, it's been the greatest. It's, I've had like so little few issues with it. And it. They just often just work out the box, which has been superb. And so that kind of, you know, I think it summarizes my experience with using Linux full time. It's been a good one and it's like every day or year, it's just been getting better and better as more features are included, uh, experience is getting better, improving, more people are adopting it and more software is being made for it. So it's just a, it's, it's becoming so good. I've, I never really expected it to get this good. In fact, especially like 2015 time, it was looking a bit bleak to some extent. The canonical really make Ubuntu were attempt to do a Ubuntu phone, but they kind of, they just canned it in 2017. It just didn't get any market interest, but that was like them trying to target Android. And also in 2011, they wanted to aim for 200 million users by 2015. They actually only hit 40 million. I don't know where that estimate came from. And at that time in 2015, again, it, like it looked like growth was really stagnating. There was just not a reason to switch to Linux. It didn't have the support. It was still the same as it was. And you're getting all these amazing games or software that was on the Windows that just weren't on Linux. And you were stuck to these free open source versions. So it was just really stuck to those committed people. Proton has been just a real big game changer, not only with playing games, but with software as well. Like you can just tell Steam, Proton, to run this application, Windows application, via it, and it will, it like, majority of the time, it will just work like it's a native app. It's pretty incredible, and it just seems to keep getting better and better. You can inject AMD upscaling, so you can get better performance. When Elden Ring launched, I think I was getting better frame rates on Linux than I was on Windows because I could run the game at like 1440p and then use AMD FSR to upscale it to 4K to get this nice crisp footage without sacrificing frame rate. Something that wasn't available on Windows. And we can see on the Proton database that 76% of the games of the top 1000 games, which is to measure by peak from current players, are in a very good state of playing. So gold. Is that it, it runs perfectly and maybe it requires tweets. Time is just runs out of the box. We see 31% of the games just run out of the box. And it's 85% if we include silver, which are runs with minor issues. But the games are still playable. I've even found bronze games still greatly playable. And if you want the Windows experience, then there is Ubuntu or Windows Ubuntu, which is Ubuntu but just copies the theme of Windows. Look, it looks it looks like exactly like it, which is crazy. If OS X is more your thing, then you can get elementary OS, which mimics, well, Mac OS X, as you can see. And so you can get all sorts of Linux distributions and you can just change them to how you want them. Uh, you, there's even an Intel based Linux operation called Clear Linux, which is the focus of it is to be as efficient as possible with Intel's CPUs. And the benchmark results is usually the fastest out there because they've tailored it specific, specifically for their needs. So what do you think of Linux? Are you someone who actively uses it and how long have you been using it? Are you someone who's thinking of switching to it? Or are you someone who's, you know what, sticking back to the Windows or sticking to your OS X? Either way, comment down below and do subscribe to my channel where I mostly do programming videos, but I also do some talking points like why is Rayleigh becoming so popular? So do check them out. I'll see you hopefully in the future.